Welcome to this video where we're going to go through an example of straight line depreciation. So straight line depreciation is the peanut butter approach to reporting the cost of owning an asset and it losing value over time. We know that we have an asset, we can use it, but the value of that asset declines the more we use it. So let's give an example of this depreciation. Let's say we buy equipment that we expect to use for three years for $8,000 $80,000. And at the end of the period, we expect to sell it to a used equipment dealer for $10,000. So we expect to have it for three years. We expect to, we'll buy it for 80 and we'll sell it for 10. That's the estimation. So that's the residual value, that 10,000. So the cost is 80,000, the use is three years and the salvage value or the, the, the residual value on it will be $10,000. So how much of it are we using up? Well, according to these assumptions, we're using up about 70 grand. And this peanut butter approach basically takes that 70 grand and divides it by three and allocates that amount each year uh, to the accumulated depreciation and then also reports that amount on the income statement as depreciation expense. So the cost is 80,000 minus the 10,000 salvage value is the 70,000 cost consumed. And then the 70,000 cost consumed is divided over three years used. And then we have our depreciation expense and accumulated appreciation journal entry for those three years. Let's see how that looks on the balance sheet and income statement. We'll report accumulated appreciation of 223,333. And we'll have a credit there. It will maintain a credit balance and we'll build that credit balance each year until we've depreciated the full value that we expected to, to use the asset for. And then we'll have a depreciation expense each year. And the depreciation expense will be 23,333. So what's the net equipment value on the books after year one is the question. Well, we bought it for 80 and now we have accumulated depreciation to net it with because accumulated depreciation is, it's not, it's not like one of these accounts with cash, right? You, you credit cash and the cash is it's gone, right? It's gone. It's, it's, in, it's in the wind. Accumulated appreciation stays with us on our books. We track it. It maintains a credit balance and it increases with credits and decreases with uh, debits. It's weird because it's a contra asset account. These contra asset accounts maintain these balances that are opposite to how we normally think of assets and because they're intended to accurately assess the value of the asset. So what's the equipment value after year one? Well, we bought it for 80 and we have accumulated appreciation of 23,333, just the 80,000 minus the 23,333 on there. Okay, so let's see what we do in year two. In year two, uh, it, we have accumulated appreciation is the same. Remember, it's the peanut butter approach. Same amount each year, evenly spread over time. We're gonna have a, it's the same journal entry, accumulated appreciation, and then depreciation expense. In year two, it's the same amount, but a new entry for the next year. Well, what's the net equipment value after year two is the question. We now have accumulated appreciation of not 23,333, but two entries of that. So it is, what is it? It's 40,600 and 46,666. That's the total. And so we net that against the 80,000 that it is, and we'd end up with a value of about 33,334. All right. So that 56,000 I just took from the prior period, and we added that, and we netted the accumulated appreciation from that. And that's what the, the equipment's worth on the books 33,334. All right. Let's do the last entry. And the last entry, we have accumulated appreciation of 23,333. We have depreciation expense in that third year of the same amount. And what's the net asset value on the books? Well, if we only use it for three years and we've been depreciating for three years and we're using straight line, for sure the asset value on the books should be, if you're thinking zero, you're wrong. It should be the residual value, right? Because our plan was to sell this in the third year. And if we're selling it in the third year, then we need that $10,000 to stay on there. And that's our estimated value at the end of it. So we'll sell it at that year. And some of you are saying, well, wait, Kyle, a lot of times we just don't wait till to sell it and get a residual value. Sometimes we depreciate it down to zero. Sometimes we sell it before that. And you know what? Three years is a long time. How do we know we're going to get that 10 grand? Well, you are the ones that are eager to study more accounting because what we need to do is ask the question, well, what if we sold the asset? So I'm going to create a scenario here. Well, what if we sold the asset for 40,000 after year two? Wow. We sold it for $40,000 after year two. So we've included the depreciation expense and accumulated appreciation. We have two entries for year two. And let's just assume, let's take out some assumptions here and, and move things around just a little bit so that we can, we can organize ourselves. And 
Well, if we sold it after year, year two, we still have that accumulated depreciation that's on the books and we get $40,000. Well, let's start with this entry. You do the same with all journal entries. Start with the things you can touch. Start with the tangible assets. That always makes things a lot easier. Well, if you're selling this asset, you're getting cash. And I love starting with cash and we know it's easy to know if it's, you know, where it's going. So we're getting cash. So that's going to be a debit and it's going to be an increase of cash for us, all right? So debit cash for 40,000. What else is happening? Are we gonna keep that piece of equipment if we're selling it for 40 grand? No, that goes off the books. So we're gonna have an asset get credited, credit the asset for $80,000. And some of you are like, wait a second, Kyle, I thought it had a net value of uh, much less than that. Yeah, it does have a net value, but the asset's still recorded at, his, at its historical cost. Where do we account for that net value? Remember, that's your accumulated depreciation. You're actually gonna debit your accumulated depreciation for the total amount you've been depreciated. It's been depreciated over time. Uh, so in this case, it's 46,666 has been depreciated over two years. That's two of those entries that we talked about before of the depreciation expense each year of 23,333. Well, we had two of those and those were netted against it. And so the asset, uh, at the end of year two was worth, you know, 33,334. That was the net value. All right, so we're done, right? 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 Wrong. No, we're violating the, one of the laws of accounting. We don't have our debits equal to our credits. Look at this, we got cash, we got asset, and we got accumulated appreciation. Our cash and our accumulated appreciation is worth 86,666, and our asset's only worth 80,000. We need another credit. What should we do? Well we're gonna credit a gain. We already expensed a lot of that asset and we expensed more than we needed to. When we sell it, we're gonna report a gain and we're gonna report a gain of the net value, 6,666, and that's gonna be the journal entry here. So we have a debit of cash, a credit of asset, debit of accumulated depreciation, and a credit of a gain of 6,666. You'll notice something here, and we've talked about this before. Because we're not in the business of selling this equipment, it's not our core thing. It's not like we're Caterpillar or something like that. If we were Caterpillar, it would be a different situation, but we wouldn't be using the, the, the equipment and depreciating it. This is the equipment we use for our business in some way that's not like a core thing that we're not selling this equipment. It's not, a, it's not something we do a lot. So when you're not, it's not part of your core business, you have reported as a gain or a loss typically on the income statement and uh, it gets credited here. So we have a, it's, it's out of the normal business stuff, uh, items that we do. So we, it's not a cost of goods sold and revenue. It's a gain, it's always a gain. So it's a gain in these kind of situations. Well, what if we got less money? What if we got 30,000 instead of the 40,000? How would that change it, Kyle? Tell me what, what's going on. Well, let's just change a few things. So first of all, we gotta change our cash. Our cash is 30,000. Gotta change that entry. So our cash is 30,000 and everything is out of whack, right? Everything is out of whack because now we have debits are less than our credits. We got 86,000, that doesn't make any sense. We gotta make this in balance. So we're gonna take this cash and we get the net amount of that get, we get the, the net amount of all of these and we got to take off this gain and we take off this gain and we calculate it as a loss. We add 30,000 to the 46,666, which gives us about 76,000. We net that against the asset of 80,000 and we end up with a loss, a loss of 3,334. And you'll notice that our debits equal our credits. And this is really kind of beautiful, right? This is kind of like poetic and neat. No matter what happens, we can figure this out if we follow the laws of, uh, of accounting and just say, okay, debits equal credits, and you have to have at least one debit, one credit, and they have to maintain balance. So this is journal entering, uh, the journal entries associated with depreciation and accumulated depreciation, and depreciation expense for, you know, when you do it in a period and then when you sell an asset. I'll see you in the next video where we'll go through another example of straight line depreciation.